In this problem, we have to find the interval of convergence for this power series. So we'll start by using the ratio test. The ratio test says if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, one of three things can happen. So first, if the limit is less than 1, you have convergence. If it's greater than 1, we get divergence. And if it's equal to 1, we have no information. In this problem, we want the series to converge. So what we do is we work out this limit, and then we purposely set it less than 1 because we're trying to force convergence. OK, so this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. So the first step is to figure out a sub n plus 1. So we will replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. So we'll get negative 1. So let's see, n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2. Then here we have x minus 5 to the n plus 1 over and then n plus 1, 8 to the n plus 1. So the only thing that's been written down so far is a sub n plus 1. We're supposed to divide by a sub n. So instead of dividing, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So this entire piece here is your a sub n. So we'll just flip it because we're multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have times n, 8 to the n, over negative 1 to the m plus 1, and then x minus 5, and that's to the nth power. OK, so there's some simplification that happens in the next step. So first note that all of the negative 1s will always go away in these problems. The reason is, if you have negative 1 to any power, say n plus 2, there are two choices for the value of negative 1 to the n plus 2. It could be 1. If it's 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. The other choice is negative 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is also 1. So in any case, this is 1. So they pretty much go away. Let's go ahead and write down the limit sign again. And then n is approaching infinity. All right, what about the x minus 5s? Here we have x minus 5 to the n plus 1, and here we have x minus 5 to the n. You can break it up and write it as follows. So if we have x minus 5 to the n plus 1 over x minus 5 to the n, we can write the numerator as x minus 5 to the n times x minus 5 to the 1. That's all divided by x minus 5 to the n. And you'll notice that these cancel, and so you're left with simply x minus 5. So we still have the absolute value, and we have x minus 5. All right, the n is going to stay there, and that's not going anywhere, so n. The a to the n over the a to the n plus 1, well, something similar will happen. We'll have a to the n over 8 to the n plus 1. And doing the same technique, we write 8 to the n plus 1 as 8 to the n times 8 to the 1. The 8 to the n's cancel, and so we get 1 over 8. So we're left with, on the bottom, the n plus 1. And also, we're left with the 8. And I'm pretty sure that's it. We've considered everything. The negative 1's go away. We dealt with the x minus 5's. We dealt with the 8's. We're left with the n and the n plus 1. When you take this limit, the n and the n plus 1, uh, the degrees are the same. So you're just going to get 1 here. And then you'll, let, you'll be left with the absolute value of x minus 5 over 8. You want this to converge, so you set it less than 1. Now we use properties of absolute value. So we have x minus 5 over the absolute value of 8. So that's just 8. And that's all less than 1. To solve for x, we'll multiply both sides by 8. So times 8 times 8. 
So we have the absolute value of x minus 5, and that's less than 8. When you drop the absolute value, you'll get a plus or minus. So x minus 5 less than 8 and greater than negative 8. Then to finish, we'll just add 5 to all three parts of the inequality. That'll leave us with negative 3 less than x, less than 13. So when we know it converges for all values of x between negative 3 and 13. So the only thing left to do is to check the endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the original problem one more time so we can reference it as we check the endpoints. So going from 1 to infinity, then we have negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then it's x minus 5 to the n over, on the bottom we have n, 8 to the n, just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and check our endpoints. Let's start by checking, um, I guess we can check negative 3 first. Let's check negative 3. Let's do that. So to do that, what you do is you actually just plug in the negative 3 for the x. So we will get the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the m plus 1. And then plugging in negative 3 will be negative 3 minus 5. So it's going to be negative 8 to the n. Oh, this is nice. This is a nice problem. Over n, and then here we have uh, 8 to the n. Very, very good uh, problem. So negative 8 to the n, what you can do with this uh, is you write it as negative 1 times 8 all to the n. And that can be simplified using properties of exponents as negative 1 to the n times 8 to the n. This is a really key strategy. So this is going to be equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, negative 1 to the n, 8 to the n, over n times 8 to the n. And boom, look, these cancel. So this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity. So the negative 1 to the n plus 1 times the negative 1 to the n, what happens is here you add the exponents. So you get negative 1 to the 2n plus 1, right? Because n plus 1 plus n is 2n plus 1 over n. Then here you have to use uh, some math uh, that you may not know, or maybe you do. But 2n plus 1 is always odd, no matter what. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to get a negative 1. Because whenever you have... Uh, negative 1 to an odd power, it's always negative. This is, of course, assuming n is an integer, which it is in this case. So ignoring the negative 1, uh, it's just a p-series. So this is a divergent p-series. So this diverges by the p-test since p equals 1, right? There's a 1 here which is less than or equal to 1. So 1 over n, the sum of 1 over n diverges. So if you put a negative there, it's also going to diverge because uh, it's not going to help you. If you have something that, that diverges and you put a negative in front of it, it's still going to diverge. So because we have uh, divergence at negative 3, uh, when we go to write our final answer, we don't include the negative 3, so we use a parentheses. Boom. Okay, now we just have to check 13. Let's go ahead and do that now. So to check 13, so let's check 13. We just take the 13 and we plug it in here for the x. So we get the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the m plus 1. And then 13 minus 5 is going to give us 8. Right Again, putting a 13 here, 13 minus 5 is 8. So we get 8 to the n over n times 8 to the n. Oh, this is awesome. So these cancel. It's a really, really good problem. It's a really good example. Um, the problem works out nicely. Uh, it's just a nice, nice problem. So here we have negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. 
And this will converge uh, via the alternating series test. Let's go ahead and go through the motions. So when you're looking at the alternating series test, you have to first pick your a sub n. So in the alternating series test, a sub n is the non-alternating part. So, so in this case, it's 1 over n. It's the part that doesn't have uh, the alternations. And then you just go through the motions. The first step is to just verify that the limit is 0. So take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, and that's 0, so check. The second step is to verify that it is non-increasing. Remember, non-increasing means decreasing or staying the same. And it's pretty clear that the bigger that n gets, the smaller it gets, uh, the smaller this fraction gets, and it's, it's not oscillating. It's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so it's non-increasing. So you just say it is non-increasing check. So both conditions are satisfied, so the series converges by the alternating series test. So it converges by the, I'll just call it AST, alternating series test. So because we have convergence at 13, we include the 13, so we're going to use a bracket. So, so bracket 13. And that's why this is a nice problem, because you have convergence at one endpoint and divergence at the other. And, you know, the tests weren't too hard. We had to use uh, the p-test and the alternating series test. So it wasn't, um, you know, too difficult of, uh, of a problem. So I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there in the world who is trying to learn some infinite series and some calculus. Good luck.